Welcome to part three of Ancient Secrets. We've been looking at the Earth's biomagnetic energy grid and those special power places that occur at precise locations around the country. The largest energy vortex in Australia, centred at Wilpena Pound in the Flinders Ranges, presents some interesting enigmas and startling clues from previous time cycles. The extraordinary rock carvings and ancient hieroglyphs we found in this area record humanity's earliest symbols and writing, as well as the script of other ancient cultures who apparently came on pilgrimage to this place. The oldest petroglyphs, carbon dated at 40 to 60,000 years, and carved images of goggle-eyed sky beings are also found at some of the other key power places on the world grid, such as Mount Shasta in California, Black Mesa on the Hopi Indian Reservation, Tibet and Easter Island. The Adna Martina, the Aboriginal custodians of this major Australian power place, record the legend of the Balnapal, creator beings from the stars who taught their people in the ancient past and rescued them in times of disaster. They say the petroglyphs are not Aboriginal and represent the language and symbols taught by these sky beings, not unlike the carved tablets God gave to Moses. Given the parallel myths and legends at the power places worldwide, it would seem the Jews weren't the only tribe with sky beings appearing at sacred places. More interesting, Melbourne researcher Paul Cadwallader, who first discovered the importance of the carvings, noticed that some of the glyphs matched the strange gigantic patterns, so-called crop circles, that appeared across England and Europe in 1990-91. What were ancient hieroglyphs doing in modern European crop fields? It was a bizarre connection that led to excited meetings with the English scientists involved in the crop circle research and Hopi Indians who were familiar with the ancient knowledge. Well, all of my interest in um, the petroglyph research suddenly was tripped off to a major event. And this major event was the crop circles in England. Now, Colin Andrews had been researching them for about um, eight or ten years before I met him. And up until that time, most of the circles were simple circles in, in the grass fields. All of a sudden, um, about two seasons ago, one glyph appeared that was suddenly a quantum leap beyond a traditional circle in a field. And as soon as I saw it, I recognised similarities at least with the ancient petroglyphs that were carved at specific grid locations on the planet. And when I went through my research and investigated, I noticed the incredible similarity of this first crop circle design that suddenly shifted the world's consciousness to what crop circles really represented. Up until then they were simple circles basically. This glyph appeared and suddenly the world was aware that it wasn't a whirlwind. Um, mating badges or hedgehogs had nothing to do with it, as was suggested to Colin Andrews. Um, you were clearly looking at an intelligent symbol of some type. Now the similarity of that, two circle joined by a line with a series of rings, which are the essential components to this petroglyph here found at Chambers Gorge, mm. is quite remarkable. Mm. While they're not identical, Certainly they're very similar, and the key components, as I say, um, are remarkable. Mm. I might add that another remarkable thing about this particular petroglyph here is that it's almost identical to one of the characters in the Rongo Rongo writing on Easter Island. Here you've got a, another fairly current crop circle design, clearly an intelligent symbol, and the key components being a large circle connected by a line with a small circle on the end are certainly the key components of this petroglyph in mm. Chambers Gorge.
There's an interesting new dimension which has come up with the crop pictograms as well because they are very, they are very um, uh, transient kinds of things. It only takes someone to come along with his combine harvester to remove it, and they do. Um, but what's happening there is that these seem to be, or at least no one actually really knows the answers around crop circles. I should start with that. But there's one little, little line of thought which I think is worth pursuing, and that is that these are kind of keys. They are symbolic keys and um, holographic um, information containers on all sorts of different levels and that, uh, and that they already pre-exist and that they have been manifested even though temporarily in the crop fields of England which is an area where, the, where higher beings are not tampering in the free will of humans they're just saying look at this if you want to right? so they're not tampering in free will they, they're just giving people an option but um, what's happening there is that it's, it's as if we're being given the keys and the, and the programming um, passwords uh, to a, a holographic universe which must contain, people feel on a subjective level that it contains solutions. This is one of the reasons why people are, or at least certain people, are getting really excited about the crop circles. Was this some kind of universal language system used throughout the civilized galaxy? Were they phonetic? Why did they encode such complex geometries? Were they some sort of frequency signatures? Why do these crop circle designs appear only at grid points and adjacent to major sacred sites like England's Avonbury or Glastonbury? Even worse, the unexplained appearance of these bizarre glyphs were being associated with UFOs, our modern version of sky beings. Are we witness to the return of the Lords of Light as promised by the Mayan and Tibetan legends? And do they bring the same symbols, the same message as in the ancient past? Curious to note, too, that New Zealand grid researcher Captain Bruce Cathy first discovered the geometric pattern of energy lines by plotting the paths of reported UFOs and their apparent relationship to the Earth's magnetic field. Is someone trying to tell us something? Is this ancient energy system deliberately being brought to our attention? Is there an ancient knowledge and tradition about the grid and these mysterious power places that's been lost from history. To answer some of these questions, we turn to some of the more extraordinary information that's come up in our research. In particular, the remarkable synthesis of human knowledge systems called the Keys of Enoch. The Keys of Enoch is a code book of spiritual and scientific knowledge describing the original sacred DNA language that existed back before the big disaster in the ancient past and how it relates to the DNA frequency spectrum, the so-called tree of life. It reveals precise techniques to activate the human bio-circuitry, create holistic free energy systems, vibrational healing and the restoration of the planetary grid. The keys accurately detail the geometric coding of the Earth grid from Giza to Mexico and Australia, and especially the power places or sacred sites of proto-communication where whole light beings came in previous time cycles to those who knew the harmonic summoning codes in the ancient mother tongue. The very phonetic codes we find recorded in stone at these places. Along with the wild and woolly tales of tribal peoples at the power places, our own Christian Bible records 200 human contacts with the Malik, the angels, 
the divine messengers of Hebrew history. So what about the damage to the grid claimed by the Aboriginal and Hopi shamans and the collapsing biosphere? Is it possible to restore and reactivate this ancient energy system? Are there historical precedents for calling in a technical assistance team from the stars? Is there an extraordinary ancient harmonic technology beyond machines and physical science as we know it? Keys of Enoch insist there is, and links all the ancient cosmologies and sacred knowledge into a higher physics that's keyed to the DNA frequency spectrum and the geometries of light and sound. The keys explain how the human and planetary biosystem can be tuned and activated using specific harmonic frequencies in the original sacred language. The keys, like many ancient sources, describes a grand time cycle of human and planetary evolution, progressing from alpha and primitive beginnings to a final transcendent omega point with the completion of the evolutionary program and the firing up of the Earth's energy grid, the mythic round table of the Grail Knights. According to legend, this reactivation of the grid could have the potential to repair the biosphere and restore the planet to its former balance and beauty to create a heaven on Earth. The Keys of Enoch speak of 144,000 activated humans performing a geosynchronous ritual using the ancient harmonic sound codes. This is echoed by the Hopi Indian prophecy of the 144,000 sun dancers who gather in the last days of the world to dance at the 12 power wheels for the dawning of the fifth world. So let's have a look at the ancient harmonic science and the geomantic technology of grid activation. The Aboriginal and many indigenous people speak of dreaming the world, which is their way of consciously creating the future. It summons to mind the old magical maxim which says, first in imagination, then in will, then in reality. The predictions of the old people were as such that um, the world and the earth and humanity would go through such a change that it would um, bring back the old ways and the old laws and bring back people as one. During the time that they were waiting for this great occurrence to occur, they watched the stars and they watch the planet movements, they watch the environment, and they watch the Earth ships. And these were the signs that would tell them when the time was right for the gathering again of the old clan and of the old master teachers and the formation of the golden link, as we Aboriginal people call it. Now, the golden link is the rainbow serpent, Boami, the sacred rainbow serpent. And that would be the bringing back and the joining together of the ancient teachers and the traditional custodians and bring them back as one people. Our environments flow so sweetly when they are frequenting this um, magic pathways. The ancients had it, and um, you can still see in Europe all the, all the cases, it's all documented. So it's about a realignment of our potential with that system. And that, yeah, I'm on the track. 
I'm intrigued. I'm totally intrigued. I can't put this down. I've started a project which is called the CenterQuest Project, which is based, actually, the name CenterQuest is based on the ancient shamanistic Chinese in their schools of feng shui, where they became obsessed with the center quest, defying the center. So it's an apt name for a project which aims to examine in a tangible uh, way the earth grid system um, and its workings and the value of acupuncture points as intensification of that electromagnetic energy. This, uh, this earth grid that's so so important for people to understand? Well, the earth's a living being, and as soon as we can understand that it's a living being, then we can comprehend that, uh, like other living beings, it has energies and systems of energies that keep it vital. And this system of energies is a network, a pattern, that covers the whole globe. Ancient civilizations had themselves uh, located on particular energy paradigms within the pattern which supported life, supported crops, uh, kept everything in harmony, kept the weather in harmony. And what we've done in our uh, development has moved away from the perception of the grid and the perception of its importance until we actually have reached a point where we don't even realize that it exists other than the researchers now that are researching energy, subtle so, energy. So you're talking about the, the biomagnetic grid that involves yeah, the, the plant, bio the natural grid. Yeah, sort the of life energy. grid. Yeah, the life grid itself, the acupuncture system of the earth. And as the acupuncture system of the body has some 700, 800 points, the acupuncture system of the earth would mirror that. The whole thing's a hologram. The basis of what all that we're talking about uh, revolves around the fact that everything in our universe consists of vibrating particles and vibrating particles it would not be too difficult to um, demonstrate that any particles that are vibrating would be affected by sound waves um, the theory behind all of this is that there is a basic harmonic principle relating to the very existence of our position in time and space which is as some people have put it like a uh, cosmic hologram we're living within the cosmic hologram and our bodies themselves um, are holographic type projections and there's a lovely tract in the bible which says that god was brooding over the darkness and then he said let there be light and the light entered the darkness and life burst forth on the earth and in fact you can explain the whole of life on Earth, in terms of interactions between waves and vortices, is that if in fact matter in our world is formed out of movement at the speed of light in the little vortices that form the electrons and protons that make up the atoms and the molecules of our world, then if in fact we could increase the speed of motion within these vortices beyond the speed of light, then the, the matter would simply vanish out of our space and time. The belief is that uh, in ancient days, the cultures of old Sumeria, for instance, possessed a science of sound which could be used for all sorts of everyday purposes. In particular, when it comes to using sound for healing, I think it can be quite uh, healing and calming, for instance. I think it can be demonstrated in any context that the use of certain mantram, mantras, chants, invocations taken from ancient languages has direct effect on people. Uh, I even recall once uh, being at a conference in Jerusalem where Dr. Philip Berg, the then head of the Kabbalah Institute in Jerusalem, uh, was talking of the human body as being a walking biocomputer and that this walking biocomputer can be programmed or reprogrammed through use of certain key words and phrases in ancient language. He was referring specifically then to Hebrew 
which is one of the, uh, which is a modern version of one of the most ancient languages on our planet, and carries with it sounds which are everlasting. We may reform the way we use sound, but the sounds themselves go back to the beginnings of time. But the sounds themselves go back to the beginnings of time. The New World as the prediction of our people and indeed the Hopi Indian predictions, the Tibetan predictions and all the um, ancient cultures had known that the time would come after the year 2000 when a new world would begin based on the old ancient cultural spiritual law. L-O-R-E, of all the nations around the world. Well, all of the cultures around the world have legends and tales and myths about beings of light that once walked with humankind on this planet. And many of them have predictions and prophecies that this will reoccur. These beings that are described in the Keys of Enoch are the beings that came from cycle upon cycle upon cycle and initiated races and development of uh, evolution and civilizations. Some of the races went from Alpha to Omega and were able to leave this dimension altogether in total. Other races like our own have kind of stumbled through time and risen to heights and then catapulted into the depths again and had our dark ages and our golden ages. And we're, in a sense, in a dark age now, even though we have all the signs and everything else, we have lost contact with the earth, we've, we're dispirited beings, we're totally lost in this maze of materialism, and these higher beings are saying, you're tangled up too much in your materialistic reality, you'll have to step back a bit from it, because this reality may not be sustained for very much longer, and you're going to have to understand the dynamics of how the higher evolution work. And what's the importance of harmonics in the ancient sacred languages when it comes to the keys? Well, the understanding is that in this last cycle, there are five ancient languages that were given at the beginning of the cycle, and they were Egyptian, Sanskrit, Chinese, Hebrew, and Tibetan. And these five languages were directly given by higher intelligence to the human beings to use. And that was the languages were to be followed very precisely because the harmonics of the languages themselves changed the DNA within the beings. So if the beings were living this perfect state of language in its purest form as it originally was given, it kept them harmonized in the way they spoke, in the way they chanted, in the, the, the various vocal uh, expressions that they had. And some of the languages were very melodious and beautiful. Other languages had very guttural forms. And these, each of these languages were structured in such a way as to affect the DNA on a sonic level through vibration. And the understanding of it is that 
when one resonates a, a given uh, linguistic form, the cerebrospinal fluid starts to resonate into a pattern, into a standing wave. And that cerebrospinal fluid is the source of all of the imprinting that goes to all of the cells. And within all of the cells are the DNA. And the DNA receives its signals as sonic pulses. So in ancient times, the language is extremely precise. took a particular key and it pointed to uh, a map of the world and it said there were 12 natural and 12 artificial time warp vortexa and these vortexa were used as contact areas by this higher intelligence so one of these vortexa happened to be in a sense in our backyard somewhere in the northern part of South Australia so we figured that that would be the logical place to start if we started a on the ground with uh, looking for this thing which we were told would be there and that we would find and at the other end of it to experiment with the languages to find ways of enunciating these ancient words and to see what effects they had on us directly as individuals. So at this point the experimentation has reached a kind of uh, a level of fulfillment because we've on the one hand spent these last five years developing various harmonic kind of exercises using these ancient god names which I might add are pin codes each of these names is literally a harmonic pin code the fact that it's given a, a deific uh, value is that that pin code is the access code to that level of consciousness which is labeled as a given god or demigod or whatever but it's all a level of consciousness within the divine, within the infinite mind. So if we're resonating a specific name, it's not that we're thinking of some little being over here that's a little god that, that does something about that, like a little Buddha statue. What we're doing is we, within the hologram, are re resonating the frequency, the call sign of the consciousness on the macro scale that is of that order. And then within our consciousness, we have its micro scale that same divinity within us, that same aspect of our consciousness. So this resonance creates a feedback in which there's a flow between the, the macro and micro which develops that extended awareness. So you start to perceive more and more into the macro level of perception of reality through tapping into that channel through that given God name. So then to take that to the next step was the location of this high energy point which is the contact area for proto-communication. There are places on the earth that are permanent places of proto-communication that beings can go to and start working with these sands and start developing these techniques and they will get a response. They will get a higher intelligence response and they will be surprised at how easy they will get a response. You know, it won't be lots and lots and lots of effort for a little flash and that's it. There would be uh, quite dramatic effects and we've experienced these effects. <laughs> So when you talk about going out to the grid points and uh, recruiting grid engineers and firing up the grid, just, just exactly what do you mean? Literally, um, getting 
people of like mind that understand this basic concept to take it from the level that it was at with harmonic convergence and the series project and so forth where um, or 11-11 where groups were gathering but each group was doing its own little thing you know it was doing its version of the thing the idea is to bring then the next level of coherence where large groups are on the grid like spread across the grid there might be 10 people here six people there but that's not so important one people one people one person on a sacred spot is quite enough because each human being is a transducer an acupuncture needle on the point with dynamic infinite consciousness access to these divine levels of, of intelligence which are represented macrocosmically and microcosmically within our consciousness so when we go onto those points in the grid and then we start to do something in unison where everybody's doing the same thing at the same time and thinking the same thought and visualizing to the same point of focus <coughs> then we have this next level of refinement where there is a greater level of coherence in the grid so when it fires up it fires up and says hi dad we're here <laughs> two pictograms which have been very interesting. One which was called The Serpent, which, uh, which came in 1991, which um, people are realizing is a picture of a particular uh, element within DNA and the way in which that element goes when it's bombarded with ultraviolet light, right? Uh, ozone layer, ultraviolet light bombardment, uh, genetic... Um, change of some kind. And there was another pictogram which was a Mandelbrot set. Yeah. And this is not an ancient symbol, this is a new symbol, this is from the computer age. It happened six miles outside Cambridge, which is Cambridge uh, in England, which is one of the places where chaos theory and the related theories uh, was developed. And you know, an, an exact, wonderfully elegant Mandelbrot set which was put out there. Uh, presumably to validate the idea but also I think there's a level of cosmic joke and uh, there are all sorts of things which can be can be read into these so it's also some modern things where, where they've been trying to say something I think I said that if the mining continued and the devastation of the energy grid which the minerals are part of if that was removed, then death and destruction would fall upon the earth. Our elders have um, taught us that every 7,000 years, the earth would undergo a shift on its journey towards the new worlds as we know them. One world would go, another new world would come. That world would go, 
and another new world would come. Although it seems like it's a lot of upheaval at the moment, we are actually in very, very exciting times because the predictions are being fulfilled. We've opened up ourselves to, uh, we've opened up our culture, our spiritualism and our knowledge among all of Australia. And even though it seems very bad times now, we're actually shifting into a higher level and going into the deeper culture. We are passing through almost a, uh, uh, a disintegration similar to uh, an alcoholic coma and in terms of our relationship to the spiritual nature of, of, our, of our world and, and our life. Um, and in the base, in, in, in the bottom of this, this underworld that um, human consciousness has slipped in, there is awakening in a world, almost the cyclic return of the archaic consciousness. Indigenous cultures are the seed of all human civilization. They had, in, in the uh, Australian Aboriginal dreaming, all the potentials, all the stories are there. They lived them, they maintained their seed or potency power because they lived them all in ritual. You know, they danced all the forms, although there was no kings or warriors really in Aboriginal daily life. They had enactments of warriors and, and kings and but, so they knew the way, the, as Abor the Aborigines knew the way of, of how to maintain their seed, their, their potency or function in terms of the whole of humanity, um, but through their power of ritual enactment. And yet in their um, uh, daily external life, their life in the physical embodied world, they had extreme disciplines and strictures and taboos, uh, which made them comply um, with great diligence and obedience to the laws of the earth. The coming of the Messiah would uh, consist of an influx of tremendous spiritual energy which would be um, which could be related to an electrical jolt we would receive, a high voltage electrical impulse into our systems. And if our walking by our computers weren't properly tuned for that moment, uh, we could blow some fuses and perhaps go chemically insane. The Keys of Enoch speaks of similar things. And the reason for using these ancient techniques of sound is not only to tune in the grid lines of the planet, but also to prepare our own physical vehicles so that when this quantum leap comes, this quantum change comes, we'll be able to handle it. So using these sound codes, the um, reason for using a lot of the ancient sacred sound, sacred language codes, is to reprogram our human consciousness into a consciousness of light to transform our human biological body into a body of light, superluminal light, so that we will be able to participate in and travel within some of the higher kingdoms. <laughs>
And it's these frequencies, these beneficial frequencies of electromagnetic energy that run in the grid system that can literally make or break a place, can uh, align us to a, a power which will define the power of a place, if you like. Uh, it has a magnetic draw card, this energy. And when we use these energies wisely and frequent them in our design environments, we have a place that frequents a spatial atmospheric uh, frequency that is dripping. When we see problems, as in the human meridian system, when we determine uh, an imbalance, a disharmony, acupuncture is applied. When that state in the human body goes from acute to chronic, is a crucial stage where acupuncture is applied and the energy interaction can take the disharmony from the deeper level of the chronic state out. And so balance is restored. The same is true with Earth. And what we're, what we're looking at is vast evidence of symptomology of place uh, being exhibiting disharmony. There are what we'll call alarm points that are exhibiting sensitive symptoms same as the alarm points on the body in acupuncture exhibit sensitive symptoms when they're about to pass to a chronic stage this is the time when land acupuncture is necessary so the activation or the harmonization process is literally to pump up the uh, quality of the electromagnetic vibration, which, according to Schumann, is at 7.8 hertz. In the Mayans, they talk of 8 hertz. It's this small percentage of amplification that we're after that will change subtly our atmosphere, the frequency of our atmosphere. Well, how does firing up the grid relate to the upcoming Earth changes and, the, and the, to what's happening to consciousness on this planet? Is, is there something to be done? Is there something going on? Is, what this is the interdimensional part, so this is when you get to join in and be in your own science fiction movie. At this point, higher intelligence are shifting this whole planetary matrix into the fifth dimension. That means it's going from the frequency of common light that we live in, which has its ceiling at 186,400 miles, statute miles a second. Is this, is this something to do with the jump point of 2000? Yeah, it's a, frequ it's a frequency shift, and in that frequency shift, the planet will move, it, it, its, its material being will start to go through this process of acceleration. So the, the deal is that the planetary grid itself is starting to go through changes that are inherent with its process of evolution. And it behoves us to synchronize with that and become in step with it rather than where we are completely out of step with it because when the event occurs, we will not be prepared for it. It will be cataclysmic. The event will not be cataclysmic in the sense for the people who can understand what is happening and tap into the system because they'll just simply sweep into the next matrix. So this is what's termed ascension in the, in the more common ecclesiastical terms. These contact points are told in the Keys of Enoch. These are areas of proto-communication are also the safety zones where higher intelligence will come and maintain uh, energy fields that will protect populations that gather in those areas. It's a bit like the rats in the maze, you know, part of the deal that we're here is we're here to become intelligent and to become higher intelligent. So as we go through all of these experiences, we come to a point sooner or later where we realize we're in a, a very difficult position. And if we can humble ourselves enough to understand that there is a greater consciousness driving this whole machine, then we tap into that consciousness and say, hey, what's next? What's happening? 
I haven't got the consciousness to, to dictate how one would activate the grid or what one would do with the grid, and I don't think anybody on the Earth has. However, the higher intelligence have told us that if we follow certain steps, whole light beings will manifest in time to the groups that are working on these nodal points. If they harmonize these particular sacred times, if they work with this unified consciousness of purpose, then the whole light beings will manifest and they will be the ones that will instruct. The ancient people didn't have this, this vast complexity of uh, wanting to understand how things ticked. They just simply went out and did it. And my belief is that it's extremely simple. It's not complicated. If Aborigines up in the Northern Flinders Ranges can call light beings to them, their presence, they didn't need Bachelor of Arts or PhDs to do that. And that means we can do that. And it's been our cultural experience to be separated from divinity by a vast gulf of religion and dogma. And the reality is the divinity is all around us all the time and happening all the time. And it's more like for us to tap into it than, than for it to come and bash us on the head. secrets with them and our people carried their secrets too and we were lucky in one respect because we were left alone for thousands and thousands of years to reconstruct that energy grid which we simply call Miami the sacred rainbow serpent so we were allowed to continue on our responsibility to the energy grid to the earth plus and to keep the planet in one energizing energy. So we were really, really lucky. So now after just 155 years, to be exact, we have the opportunity to restore once again that energy, the crystalline grid, to shoot that power right out throughout the world. There is a great deal more that could be said about the ancient harmonic science. New research is coming in all the time. New understandings are emerging about the nature of holograms and the behaviour of light in tetrahedral geometries, the secret of the pyramids. For instance, a laser beam shone down through the top of a glass pyramid produces an extraordinary third dimensional shadow shape. Viewed from different angles, this reveals all the character shapes of the Hebrew alphabet. These are the natural energy forms produced by the behaviour of light in the tetrahedral geometries of our universe, the sacred DNA language, the original mother tongue preserved in ancient Hebrew. of research, scientist Dr. Jim Hertak has conducted unusual experiments in the pyramid temple structures around the world. Vocalising these ancient sound codes or divine names, Dr. Hertak 
has been able to produce visible standing waves of light when the internal circuitry of the structures is activated by the correct vibrational frequencies. This is the mythic quest for the grail on the round table of the earth, the ancient harmonic science that encodes the lost frequency keys for the reactivation of the human and planetary grid. As above, so below. It's all a reflection of the divine master hologram. Along with this, a diverse network has spontaneously arisen worldwide that's beginning the reactivation of local power places and ancient temple sites, usually in concert with indigenous people. This emerging movement of geomancers working with the ancient knowledge, these days referred to as grid engineers, have been experimenting with synchronised worldwide rituals gathering at the key power places on special dates as indicated by the ancient knowledge systems. This reactivation of the grid system with the raising and balancing of the planet's harmonic frequency is seen by many researchers as the natural completion of the Gaian evolutionary program that will restore this world to its former balance and beauty. The use of specific mantras or vibrational access codes in the sacred DNA language of the ancients is central to this work. The two most potent ancient Sumerian Hebrew sound codes that can be used in the common language as well as being intoned in the style of harmonic throat chanting are yod Hey vod Hey, the revealed name of God, and the powerful protection mantra of Kadosh 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 Adonai Sebiyot. <laughs> body of the earth, the biomagnetic grid, the vibratory infrastructure that literally holds the earth together, is in a condition of intense fever called resonant dissonance. The nuclear and toxic pollution of the biosphere and the high-tech mining of the power places, the circuit board of the planet, is approaching critical mass. If this continues unchecked, the Aboriginal elders of this country warn that the big blow will come again. If we're to believe the ancient knowledge and the indigenous people, the reactivation of the grid and retuning of the planetary harmonic could not only save this beautiful world of ours, but completely transform our species. As John McGovern remarks, it's a bit like an intelligence test. If we successfully find all the clues encoded into our myths and legends and complete the current program, then we just might graduate. <laughs> with harmonic convergence and the series project and so forth where um, or 11 11 where groups were gathering but each group was doing its own little thing you know it was doing its version of the thing the idea is to bring then the next level of coherence where large groups are on the grid like spread across the grid there might be 10 people here six people there. And that's not so important one people one people one person on a sacred spot is quite enough because each human being is a transducer, an acupuncture needle on the point, with dynamic, infinite consciousness access to these divine levels of, of intelligence. 
which are represented macrocosmically and microcosmically within our consciousness. So when we go onto those points in the grid and then we start to do something in unison where everybody's doing the same thing at the same time and thinking the same thought and visualizing to the same point of focus, <coughs> then we have this next level of refinement where there is a greater level of coherence in the grid. So when it fires up, it fires up and says, Hi, Dad, we're here. Thank you.